My name is Bill Allward. This is Little Mountain Ranch and Garden um, in Fort Calhoun, Nebraska. So we're just about 20 miles north of Omaha. Uh, we're in the Luss Hills, right next to the Missouri River. If you walk to the very top of our property, you can see the Missouri River. Um, so we're kind of in a unique landscape. Um, and we have some pigs behind me. We are a uh, farrow to finish hog operation. We also do grass-fed beef. Um, we do a little bit of pastured poultry and eggs, and we dabble with some market gardening as well. We applied for a SARE grant to test out using a fodder system, and, and kind of the background for that is, is one of our highest expenses is winter feed costs, especially keeping these guys happy during the winter. Um, we've often supplemented with hay, specifically alfalfa hay, in, in, in addition to their grain supplementation, and we found that um, um, hay can be pretty expensive, especially alfalfa hay, as a daily supplement. Um, and fodder seemed like a pretty in interesting idea. One of the things that always intrigued me was that you could take a, a 50 pound bag of feed and turn it into like 150% to 200% more um, pounds of, of a feed stuff. And so we uh, trialed out a small, it's kind of small to medium large um, fodder system. It's got um, three trays per rack, or six trays per rack, four rows high. And we trialed uh, multiple different grain types, uh, oats, barley, wheat, rye, triticale. And then uh, within seven to nine days, we were able to harvest that and feed it to the pigs. What we found is that um, for most of the grain types we use, um, triticale was one that, that comes to the top of mind. Uh, for a 50 pound bag of, of seed, we were able to turn that into about 200 to 220 pounds of, of feedable fodder. Um, now some of that is water weight, but we typically shut the water off to those trays before harvest. Um, and then we take those, cut them up, and, and, and take them down to wherever the livestock are and supplement. For us, we were supplementing our cattle and pigs uh, with fodder. Typically, we were feeding the fodder to um, sows with litters or finishing pigs that were on a limited grain diet to supplement their um, daily ration. And then as an energy supplement for the cows, we were feeding fodder typically once a day. One of the reasons fodder has always seemed like a um, a really good fit for small farms is that you're taking something and making it, in my opinion, better. Um, if I were to grind that, if I were to take a 50-pound bag of oats and grind it up, yeah, it makes decent hog food, but if I take that same grain and I soak it and then sprout it, I have released all of this energy in that seed that was wouldn't have been available to the pigs, um, like vitamins and minerals, um, enzymes, um, that's where I think it's huge is you're, you're working with less to make more versus buying lots and lots of grain um, just to grind it. Um, you're actually releasing a lot more, I think, power out of the grain that way. And to me, that's more sustainable than just, you know, buying um, bushels and bushels of grain to grind, whereas you're, you're actually turning it into a a bigger feed value than you would just just with the grain itself is kind of where I think it becomes sustainable. I think for anybody interested in this, um, you know, go do your research. Think about uh, how you're going to source the grain. Uh, the other thing is kind of think about what your your infrastructure is. For us, we fortunately have a, a, an insulated building that we can heat so that we can grow fodder. You know, during the winter months, it's a little trickier if you're going to have to erect a building or insulate a building or something like that. And I think the other thing too is for us, we're, we don't have a, a, um, a water source to the system. And so if you have a building that has water, um, that's a huge advantage. Um, and if you're able to uh, install an, um, uh, a plumbing outlet for the wastewater, that's even um, more advantageous. You know, I would try to size the system to where you can, you may not be able to feed all of your livestock, but at least be able to supplement a lot of your livestock. Cause that's what the way I view it is, it's not a, it's not a standalone feed source in the winter. It's a supplement. Um, our big mindset with livestock, especially pigs is that, and in cattle too, but especially with pigs is diversity of diet is really important. Um, 
pigs that eat just grain 24 7 um, taste way different than pigs like these guys that are down here eating roots eating weeds eating grain in the in the winter eating acorns walnuts that sort of thing that's how you make really good pork um, so that's kind of what how, how what our mindset is behind the fodder so i think um if you're looking for a way to help supplement your winter um, feed program i think fodder is a really good option but i think if, if you're interested in getting started with it um, look for farmers in your area that are doing it or or even find folks that have trialed it um, or just trial it at home. Um, it is really easy to just do fodder in your windowsill. If you take some kind of containers, be it a, a yogurt container or a, um, some kind of plastic tray, and you soak some grain and spread it out in there, soak the grain for 24 hours, set it out in there and put it on your windowsill, you'll see what I mean, it will, it will sprout. Um, and it's pretty amazing, as long as you keep it moist. Um, so it's kind of, I think it would be really advantageous for anybody interested just to do that, just to try sprouting some on their own um, and witness, you know, the potential of, of what you can do with, say, a, a small handful of wheat or something like that. It's pretty amazing stuff.